This truck you see here is referred to as a flatbed, a rollback, or if you want to get technical, a light duty carrier. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to load and unload a flatbed tow truck. I'm also going to give you some tips and tricks that will help keep your equipment running smoothly and keep you safe along the way. All I ask in return is that you smash that like button and also subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or any topics you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comment section and I'll try to make a video on it. Step 1. Light it up. Some of you guys have your trucks wired up like a damn KISS concert and others just have a beacon or emergency flashers. Whichever you have, turn them on. When I'm backing up to my disabled vehicle, I like to line the center of the bed up with the license plate of the car I'm about to tow. This helps keep the car centered when I pull it up onto the bed so I don't cover up any of the securement holes on the side that I might have to use. The distance you should stop from the inoperable vehicle depends on your setup and how far your bed extends. The distance is something you're going to need to figure out on your own and get a feel for. Step 2. Hit your switches. If you have airbags, dump them. This may not be super important when loading, but it's very important when unloading. You could hyperextend your airbags or damage a customer's bumper if you don't. While the truck is at low idle, turn your PTO on. You should never turn the PTO on or off when the truck is idled up. It is extremely hard on the pump and other parts. After you've turned the pump on, now you can idle up. To idle up on your truck, it may be a little different from mine, but most are connected to the cruise control system in some way or another. The most common way that I've seen is to turn your cruise control on and then press the resume speed button once and then press it again and hold it on the second time. The truck should idle up on its own. If it doesn't, make sure your truck is in park or you might have to depress the parking brake or something like that. Your idle should be around 1000 RPM and most definitely not exceed 1200 RPM. Now that you've got the hydraulics rolling, you want to winch out a little bit to let a little slack on the winch line. Just enough to unhook the bridle from the end of the bed. Step 3. Drop the bed. Roll your bed back a few feet, just enough to clear the bed locks. The bed locks help keep your bed more secure during transport. Next, tilt the bed. You should have your feet or your legs or whatever you want to call them of your lift to touch the ground. You should never have the bed more than a few feet past the locks. If the feet are not on the ground, the bed should be at least three quarters of the way in. Now that you have your feet on the ground, continue rolling the bed back until the end is close to the ground. I typically try to extend the bed all the way out until the end of the bed is right up to the tire. If it's a lower car, you may need to leave yourself a few extra feet in order to get under it. The reason I get so close is so then I don't have to pull out so much wire roll when I go to hook it up. Step 4. Get hooking you little hooker. Okay, so now that you have the bed where you want it, winch out just enough cable to where you can hook the vehicle up, yet not have to wind a bunch of extra cable up before it's snug. I usually pull out about 3-5 to five feet depending on the vehicle. This also helps keep your cable nice and clean on the winch. Right, so now that we've got that out of the way, it's finally our time to shine. As any experienced hooker will tell you, the hook points on each vehicle are different, yet some of them are the same. Most vehicles I deal with have this oval shaped hole that's reinforced. I'm able to insert my mini J almost perfectly and then winch in until the cable is snug. You barely want any tension at all. This will prevent the vehicle from rolling back after you put it into neutral. Now that you've got the cable snug, put it into neutral. Step 5. Load the vehicle. Now that the vehicle is in neutral, you want to start winching, but take it easy at first like we talked about earlier. You want to pay close attention to the winch. If it starts to bog down more than normal, let off immediately. You may have one of the hooks on the bridle caught at the end of the bed, or even possibly forgot to put the vehicle in neutral altogether. Figure out where the securement points on your bed are, and decide which ones you're going to use before you pull the vehicle all the way up onto the bed. Make sure to pull the vehicle up as straight and square as possible. This will make your job easier when it comes time to secure it. The wheel should now be directly in front of you. It could be the front or it could be the rear depending on which one you loaded it from. There's a ton of different equipment out there so everyone's setup is going to be a little different. You might have all chains or you might have all straps or you might have an assortment of both. 
No matter what you end up mixing and matching, the end result is you need to tie down four points on every vehicle that you tow, and that does not include the winch. The rear wheels landed directly on one of the securement holes, so he'll need the longer straps. You want to put the strap behind the wheel at about the 10 and 2 position, while keeping the short strap in the center. To get the short strap to be properly centered on the wheel, offset the strap away from the ratchet side just a few inches. When you tighten the strap with the ratchet, it will pull the short strap towards the center. I like to take the remaining excess strap and feed it back into the ratchet and then continue tightening. Alright, so now slide your bed in until you can comfortably strap down the rear wheel. Make sure you're still able to clear the bed locks when you're ready to tilt down, and also keep your feet on the ground until you're ready to tilt. If you don't winch the vehicle far enough up onto the bed, you will cause a lot of strain on the truck and the hydraulics when you're ready to start tilting. As you can see, the bed is rolled in about 50% and the Escalade has not made it past the rear axle of the flatbed. Now when he starts tilting, the front of the truck goes way up because all the Cadillac's weight is sitting behind the rear axle, which will be the only support once you tilt the bed and the feet come off the ground. When you tilt down, the flatbed's rear axle should be directly in the middle of the inoperable vehicle. Okay, now that you got the bed tilted down, finish rolling it all the way in, making sure it locks into the bed locks. Finish strapping down the other two wheels. If I'm on like a busy highway or something, I'll just take the next exit and find a parking lot before I strap down the other two points. To keep the jerking and tension off the winch cable during transport, loosen the winch up a little bit so that it's not so tight. Pay attention to where your hook is at too. You don't want to puncture an oil pan or crack the customer's bumper. Remember that the vehicle is still in neutral, so if you don't have your load secured properly, it could end up shifting during transport and coming off completely. Once you've got everything secured and are ready to go, lower the RPMs by simply hitting the brake. Air the bags back up and shut your lights off. When you get to your destination, you'll perform every step in the exact same order except in reverse. You'll find yourself in tight parking spots or narrow alleys. I'm not going to get into every scenario in this video right now but I do plan on making other videos in the future. I think that pretty much wraps it up. If you've enjoyed this content or would like to critique anything that I've mentioned throughout this video, please just throw it in the comments. Like, subscribe, I'll bring out some more content for you guys.